Hello, my favorite YouTube family. I am so excited to show you this recipe because it's so easy to make and the flavor is going to blow your mind. Let's get started. Welcome to this new setup that I have. I'm gonna be trying something a little bit different today. Here behind me, I am in my husband's studio and we're gonna try doing this voiceover with me talking to you, explaining the recipes. So if you like this new setup, let me know in the comments below. Do you like this? Do you like me talking to you? Let me know. Just like I tell you every single time, before you cut, make sure you put a wet paper towel down on the counter, then put your cutting board on top of it. This way it's going to prevent you from slipping and sliding all around and it's a little bit safer for when you cut. The Korean word bagolgi actually means fire meat. This dish is made from thinly sliced bor bork. Bork, It's a new word. <laughs> Never had bork before. Sounds like it's something from like, what's that one animal from Lost? <laughs> boar? Boar! See, it's like boar, but with a K, bork. This dish is made with thinly sliced either beef or pork, and it's either grilled or you can cook it on a stovetop. Sirloin, ribeye, or brisket are traditionally used, and today I'm gonna show you using a ribeye because as you know, the ribeye is my favorite steak. I mean, come on, ribeye. Go ahead and slice the steak into eighth of an inch slices, and if the pieces are too long, I like to cut them in half. It makes it a little bit easier for when you're eating it. Just make sure that you cut your steak all the same thickness because it will cook evenly. Once all of your meat is sliced up, go ahead and set that aside and let's make our marinade. In a large bowl, add six tablespoons of brown sugar and half a cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of sesame oil, six cloves of minced garlic, and two tablespoons of sesame seeds. You're gonna mix that up all together until everything is combined. Then add in four sliced green onions and then add your sliced beef to the marinade and mix it all up until all of the meat is nicely coated. When you make this dish and you're mixing everything together, you're gonna start smelling the aroma of the garlic and the soy sauce and oh, you're gonna thank me later for just that smell alone. Once your meat is all coated, add in half a cup of water, give it a nice stir, then put some plastic wrap over the meat and then pop it in your fridge for at least three hours or you can put it in there overnight. Here's another little tip for you. When you're peeling vegetables, put some plastic wrap down on the counter. That way when you're done peeling, it's an easy, quick cleanup. Take a cucumber and peel off all of the skin. You're also gonna wanna peel two carrots. Take your cucumber, slice it into thirds, then taking one of the thirds, slice them in half lengthwise, then lay them flat, and then you're gonna slice it again and you're gonna make little match sticks out of the cucumber. Go ahead and do this to the entire cucumber. Now, do the exact same thing to the carrot. Slice it into thirds, slice it in half lengthwise, then lay it flat, then go ahead and make your match stick cuts and then we're gonna set those aside. You're gonna need about six radishes and then we're gonna wash them and slice them up really thin. Now you might be thinking, radishes? Why would I put a radish in? Because who eats radishes, right? Well, they are amazing in this dish and trust me, you're not gonna wanna skip out on the radishes. When I was a kid, I had an older brother who dared me to eat a radish. Well, being the younger sister, listening to her older brother, I was like, sure. So I ate the radish and I did not like it. So I ended up throwing up and ever since then I was like, oh, I can't eat radishes because, Ugh. which is so funny because now I love radishes and I have no problem with them. So in the comments below, tell me, is there ever a food that you've eaten as a kid that you didn't like? And now as an adult, you're like, I have no idea why I didn't like that. Slice up four fresh crisp green onions and set those aside. 
I love green onions. And 99% of the time, I have green onions in my fridge. It just adds that sparkle to a darker, heavier flavored dish, kind of like this beef that we're making today. They also make for a pretty garnish. Speaking of a garnish, take some of those fresh basil leaves, stack them on top of each other, roll them up, and then take your knife and just go ahead and slice it. This technique is called chiffonade, and we're gonna use this to go on top of our rice bowls. Are you ready to learn how to make one of the most complicated dressings you've ever made in your culinary career? This requires two ingredients mayo, and chili garlic sauce. See, really easy. I don't know why you were so scared to make it. Go ahead and in a bowl, add one cup of mayonnaise and two teaspoons of your chili garlic sauce. Whisk everything together and voila, you have the best, easiest dressing you've ever made. One of the things I love about this recipe is you can prep out everything in advance. When you're having a busy day or you know you've got a lot going on later in the evening or, or you just don't wanna wait until four o'clock to start dinner, make it in the morning, or guess what? You can prep out everything the day before so that the time it's dinner time, all you have to do is cook some rice and cook your meat, and you've got dinner on the table. Bulgogi is traditionally grilled, but pan cooking has become really popular, especially for us home cooks. In a large pan over high heat, go ahead and add four tablespoons of oil and let it get really hot. Once your oil is hot, go ahead and add in your beef and we're gonna let it cook for one minute. Now here's the thing, the meat is going to cook really fast, so you wanna make sure you already have your rice cooked, you already have everything prepped out, that this is the last thing before you eat because there's nothing worse than overcooking your steak. After the one minute, go ahead and flip the beef over. Then you're gonna cook it for another one to two minutes. You want the beef to brown, but you also still want it to be medium rare. You can easily cut this recipe in half if you're not feeding a lot of people. You're going to love it, so why not just make up a big batch and use it for leftovers? Just saying. To plate up this dish, go ahead and put some rice in a bowl, then add that bagolgi right on top. Add those carrots, and cucumbers, radishes, and green onions. Then throw on the basil and some of that delicious mayo chili sauce. Sprinkle on some of those sesame seeds, mix everything together, and be prepared to be in heaven. I hope that these bagolgi rice bowls will make your family as happy as they've made mine. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this episode. And do you remember how I told you I love ribeye steaks? Well, check out this video right here, and I teach you how to make the perfect steak. We will see you in the next video.